Welcome to this video presentation on ABBA C500S Safety PLC Hardware Configuration. In this video, we would like to present to you briefly how a hardware configuration is done with a C500S Safety PLC. This video does not include an I.O. configuration and programming. In this example we assume that two safety modules are plugged in the I.O. bus and one safety module is in the extension bus using Profinet Profasafe I.O. field bus. This configuration project is created with the help of our latest version of programming software called Automation Builder 1.1 as you see on the screen. Now the very first step is to create a new project selecting the non-safety CPU which is PM583 ETH in this case. Safety configuration is possible only if the user is logged into the project with adequate authorization. By default the current user is indicated as nobody which means safety editing is not possible. So here is how we log into the project. When we create a safety project by default there is a user by the name owner with no password. Later it is possible to create multiple users and groups to grant or deny access to various parts of the project. Now we add the first safety module AI581S, which is an analog module on the I.O. bus. Each safety module need to be set with the right fail-safe parameters in order to ensure proper communication with the safety CPU. These settings influence the pro for safe communication performance between the safety CPU and the safety I.O. modules. One of the major parameters to be set is F destination address and this value need to match with the rotary switches setting on the module. For this case we need to set it to 2 as per the actual hardware setting and hence the default setting is good enough. Next we add the digital input output module DX581S and set its F destination address as 3. Every safety module need to have a unique F destination address within a pro for safe island. Duplicate addresses would automatically be identified by the software, and in such situation the project compilation will not be possible. Note this, when we change the default fail-safe parameter setting one has to manually update the IPARCRC parameter, as shown in the screen. This manual setting is needed as per the safety standards programming requirements. Now we add the safety CPU SM560S in the extension bus slot as per the physical placement. We need to set the enable debug parameter to on, so that the non-safety CPU will have access right to transfer the safety project to the safety CPU. Next step is to add the Profinet I.O. controller module CM579 PNIO, which would facilitate communication between the safety CPU and the remote safety I.O. module, via the non-safety CPU. We could live with the default settings as far as the Profinet station name and IP addresses are concerned. The Profinet I.O. devices will be automatically assigned with IP addresses, as shown in this range, in a sequential manner. However the user could change this address should there be a need. Now we add the Profinet I.O. device module CI502 version 3, is which is capable handling Profa safe communication over Profinet field bus. The easy and efficient way to set the station name for this device is, just change the last two digits, as per the rotary switch setting on the module. We could now add the safety digital input module DI581S onto this chain, and set the F destination appropriately. In this example we need to set this address to 4 and adjust the FIPARCRC parameter accordingly. Now we are ready with a simple safety hardware configuration. All we need to do is, compile the non-safety project first and look for no error or warning whatsoever.
Once done, we need to click open the safety IEC 61131 editor. And the system will prompt to confirm the CRC of the safety libraries. These are the certified safety libraries to be used for safety programming. So we create one new POU called watchdog setting and program the watchdog setting function block with a time value of 100 millisecond. This being a separate POU, this need to be called in the main POU, that is PLC PRG. Since there is no default watchdog time setting for the safety CPU SM560S, the user has to set an appropriate watchdog value through a standard safety function block. This function block need to be called at least once, in the beginning of the safety program execution. Without this function block calling, the watchdog time will be assumed as 0 millisecond and the CPU will go to safe stop mode. If the project compilation result in no error or warning, we are able to download this program to the safety controller via the non-safety controller through an appropriate connection. Thank you for watching this video, and for further knowledge on our safety PLC, please do watch out for our other videos on this product and topics.